and stuff. So uh, if you don't know, if you don't know Diane, um, you know, obviously uh, what I want you to do first of all is get rid of the rock that you live under, um, sell it. <laughs> you, know, you, can go on, <laughs> you can go on offer up. I know they have rocks for sale. Um, we're hanging out with our friends. I'm actually in a, in an eight year old's bedroom right now because there's kids everywhere. So, um, but the other kid's bedroom, he has a rock collection. All right. So you can sell that rock that you live under, get rid of it. Um, because if you don't know Diane, you're probably, chances are you're probably losing money or burning bridges or just like not as cool of a person. If you don't know Diane Hockman, um, you know, I mean, she's the absolute queen of attraction marketing. She is a master, like, in, in psychology and in, in marketing. I mean, just this is a person you should know. I mean, there's pretty much like God, Jesus, like Diane. Oh, stop! No, that's, <laughs> that's like that's like blasphemy. <laughs> no, but really, I, I mean, didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she liked it too. She was like, she was like, shh. You're like, Shh. No, I'm like, no, 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 no. I was good up until that. Then we're like, I'm just a housewife, man. <laughs> right, right, right. No, but in all honesty, um, you know, I've known Diane uh, for years. We've just recently, um, you know, started to build a, a, a much better relationship, I would say. And uh, it's really just been fun um, getting to know you better, Diane. I mean, you're, you're so awesome. I've watched you for years. And to have the, um, the privilege over the last, you know, probably year, to really get to know you and and develop a good relationship with you and just have a lot of fun with you. I mean, I think that's the that's the most important thing. I mean, we've just been able to have a lot of fun, joke with each other, and um, you know, and and really, I I, I look at this woman, um, you know, like 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 an aunt. You know what I mean? Like like I just I love her so much. She's amazing to me. So um, uh, I'm gonna bring her out. But it, it, you know, first question. First question I want to ask, because I, I don't really even like come up with questions. People think like, hey, dude, you know, what questions do you have for these interviews? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> we just talk, man, right? We just right. <laughs> you gotta see where it goes. You just got to you see where the river flows, man. Right, right. But um, I think one of, the, one of the things that we could probably rock this off with is like being an entrepreneur means you kind of make adjustments on the fly. I mean, yeah. when you see like – when it, when it comes to developing that skill, I mean, do you think that's something that is just kind of innate within somebody or you know, like for you, have you always just been that person too that, Hey, you know what, if it's not working, we got to make adjustments. And, and how can someone that may get rattled in, in a situation, learn to, to make certain things kind of adjust on the fly? Let me ask you a question, Ryan. How old were you when you got your driver's license? I was 16 years old. Yeah, so you were 16 years old, and you were like, you know, thinking about what foot goes on what pedal on the mirrors, and you were like trying to look at all this other stuff around, and if a car came at you from a crazy direction or something like that, you probably wouldn't be so good at making adjustments on the fly, which right. is why teenagers have so many more accidents, right? And then as you drive more and you get get more experience and you've been on the highway and somebody's cut you off, you've learned how to handle that, you've learned how to handle the person that runs the red light and all this other stuff, you get pretty skilled. And all of a sudden, if a tractor trailer starts swimming, you know how to move on the highway to make sure that your baby is safe because you have beautiful kids. I'm sure you would do anything you could to make sure that your beautiful girl and your beautiful kids are safe. You know how to make an adjustment on the fly. Right. What's the difference? The difference is experience. Right. So a lot of people think that they're going to magically get into business and be able to, you know, like I've literally been on calls and webinars where we've changed the pitch in the middle of the webinar. We've completely, I've been um, at big, huge MLM events where the power and the sound has gone out. We've literally done the event on a megaphone. I mean, I could tell you stories all day next time we're together, which will be very soon. I could tell you stories all day about changing on the fly. Right. But the only reason why you get good is because... Practice. Oh, more kids. <laughs> I hear them. Are those your kids? No. Hi. No. Oh, somebody's got kids. Yeah. Um, I love kids. So, so you just practice, and then you hang around with people more experienced. You. That's why mom and dad had to be in the car with you or some responsible party. Right. They didn't let you when you had your permit. They didn't let you just go alone. That's why I hang around with people that are more experienced today. Uh, with me, even today, after eighteen years. 
I'm still always hanging out with and seeking advice and mentorship from people that are more experienced than me. Right. Because sometimes you get into a jam and you don't know what to do on the fly. So you make a quick phone call, you send a quick text. Oh, snap, this just happened. What do I do? Right. So is it innate? I mean, are we born with it? I mean, some people are a little faster than others, but really it's just those things. And if you guys learned how to handle a car, if you learned what to do with kids, you know, we weren't, we didn't know what to do with kids when we got them. And all of a sudden they had a fever or, 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 or red spots all over them or something. And you called somebody more experienced. And then by the third kid or whatever, I only have two, but you know, you kind of know what it looks like. Right. So same thing with prospects. You know, the first guy, he tells you, he comes up and he tells you, I'm going to bring your company to some small com country. I'm going to open up a new country. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to create these systems. You're like, oh my God, I'm rich. This guy says he's going to do something. And then after 27, 30, 40, 50 people have told you that, you're kind of like, okay, let me know how I can support you. And you kind of go on your way. So, right, right. I'm an experience. I'm an experience. How right. do you know who's who? How do you know how to move? That's all. No, that's awesome. And, um, you know, I think that when you, when you say experience, I mean, it, it's not necessarily time is all is the experience, but, but, but the actual activity, right? Right. Because I, there's a lot of people that have been in this industry for 10 years, but they've really only been in this industry for one year or less. Right. Because they've only done enough activity Man. to count for that. You know, where they keep doing wow. the same first year over and over and over again. Right. Can you, can you say you that know? again? Cause I feel like, I, I feel like you said it kind of quick and I feel like that, like yeah. it may have got me. So Say that one thing again about like you've been in this industry for 10 years, but really you've only got like one year of experience. Right. And or you keep repeating the same year right. over. So you're really not, it's like being in first grade, like when you're 22, you know, it's like you're still in first grade, right. you know, and so you're still learning how to, you know, spell cat and so on and so forth. Right, so right. yes, it is experience. Um, you have to go through enough people. You have to do enough presentations. You have to do enough. Like today, look, we were trying to do a, um, you know, an interview and the invitation didn't come through. We learned from experience, right? Today we learned that that thing didn't work. It was probably my fault. I break everything technical. So <laughs> but then we learned that next time, like I didn't realize I had come on the feed and contact. You probably told me about my computer. Everybody's been looking for me today. Um, so you probably told me I'm blonde. I missed it. So I'm over here watching you, not knowing I need to make a comment. And everybody's like, "Ah!" <laughs> so it's next funny. time, you know, it's funny, make sure right? our guest. <laughs> it's funny though. We had people like that, like you know, like the the chanting. Like I'm sure what happened, like at a concert, they're like, "We want Diane." Like you do it through a text <laughs> message still. Like, and then I'm putting all this ridiculous stuff. The next one, I had like seven more things that I was going to write in there because I'm waiting for the little invite to pop up, and I didn't have the sound on, so I don't know what you're saying. And I'm just like, and then all of a sudden it's like it ended, and I'm like, oh, did I bring? <laughs> So we know for next time to make sure, you know, I know that I have to do this, you know, that, right, right. Do that and we know for next uh -huh. time. That's how we learn. Yeah, how exactly. did we learn how to do anything? Screw it up. Exactly. So people don't get that. How do you learn? You screw up. Is anybody in the audience right now? I can't see the, the chat. I could look on my phone or whatever. Is anybody, is this live or are we just talking and you're going to? No, yeah. we're not. So is anybody, is anybody crushed? Is anybody pissed off? Is anybody quitting Ryan's team? Is anybody like blocking him because we screwed up a little bit? No. In right. fact, if anything, they probably enjoyed him a little more because he was, you know, you know, waiting and figuring out or whatever. <laughs> Nobody's, the world, the sky did not fall down. We screwed up. We learned something. There you right. go. You all learned through us. So. I'm Ooh. manic today, Ryan. Don't mind me. I'm just like, it's everybody's. <laughs> just like everybody's so lit up right now because so many we keep all seeing each other so much everybody's yeah. just like ah. yeah so so um I, you know probably the next thing I'd, I'd love to talk about you know we over the last over this this year alone we've probably seen each other four times at events and I know, I'm getting sick of you Wesley I like you I'm getting tired yeah. you're everywhere yeah, it's just I can't get rid of you that's why I'd be I, like another month Aunt, I'll be seeing you. It's like he's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> eventually, eventually she'll start keep. She'll start making me stay home. You know what I mean? At the well, end no. Of eventually, I'm just gonna start coming down to your house and hanging out, <laughs> playing with the kids. I miss kids. I'm gonna come down. You, you two can go out for dinner. I heard. I'm sorry. I'm sidebarring and I'm being bad. Right, yeah, I heard she. I heard that she said yes to the dress. She did. She did. We. She got it out. She knocked it out yesterday, and um, That's I was so excited. 
Um, need a dinner out. I'm going to, Auntie Diane's going to come down and babysit. You, you two need it. a dinner out. I love it. I love it. So yes, we've seen each other a lot lately. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I can tell you, you know, I, I guess you hear it all the time. You got to get to events. You got to get to events, you know. Um, you know, it, it's, the, it's the side conversations. But, I mean, really, guys, the conversation that I've been, that, you know, Wes and I have been able to have with, uh, with Diane over the, the, the four or five times we've seen each other at events and just kind of running into each other, um, I mean, you have no idea the type of changes that go on in your business. So um, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. This is a good question. When you were actively really building um, a network marketing business, and even now, I mean, there's still people that are in your business that have to, that, that could benefit from events. So as you were kind of coming up and you realized, cause I know you had some really, really powerful mentors, you know, Jim Rohn and, and you know, all these guys that promoted events. How did you become, and the queen, the, the, the other queen, she came and she heard, she heard you talking about her. I couldn't miss my hey girl. girl. I, I know you can't show the dress and I'm not asking you to show it, but you could text me just a you. little a hint. I can show you, but, I can't show him. Right. Well, up to you, but I don't want to, you know, I'm just saying, because I'm very excited about this. So I'm, I'm very excited about this. I, text, I can't tell you how excited. Okay. <laughs> whatever you can. Whatever, or you could just describe it a little bit, but I'm just excited. So, no, anyway, gonna, what was it? I am. I'm going to send you pictures. She's gonna, I'm going to be the only person on the planet that hasn't seen this track. As, <laughs> as it should be, young man. There's no, no, no hints, no nothing. You got to sit there with your jaw on the floor that day, as I know you will. Oh, yeah. And, I know, um, I, guys, was like, I was. Uh, my girls were like, Ryan is going to fall. Like, he is going to cry so hard when you walk down the aisle in this dress. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> no, I know. I know it's going to be awesome. I just hope the internet doesn't leak it. So if you see the dress and you're no, watching, you know. yeah, no, everybody, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's very important. When's the wedding? And then we'll go to our question, our real business. When's the wedding? June twenty third next year. So okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. There's plan to be in Destiny. I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm impressed that you're. Uh, I'm impressed that you're uh, on the dress already. So that's impressive. That's good. Oh, it wasn't that's, my that's choice. Yeah. My girls are doing it all. I <laughs> have good friends. Go to events and have good friends. That's what you need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Ryan, you were asking a question about events and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, <laughs> so so when it came to like getting your people to events. Um, mm -hmm. there's an art to that, you know what I mean? Because we always yes. say, hold your business event to event. So if yes. there was a nugget that you were like, that someone was like, okay, cool, I got some people on my team. Um, maybe I don't even have any people on my team, but when I do have some people on my team, how can I effectively get people to events? What are some things that you kind of learned over the years that have helped you do that? Because that you can literally solidify your business for life if you get people to events. I your business is determined by how many people you have seats at events, period over and out, period over and out. So the first thing is when you sponsor someone, make sure that you're laying down the expectation that this is our culture, this is what we do. You give right. them the dates of the next major event or wherever you want them to be, and you let them know that if they want to run with your team. See, most people are like afraid to say that because they're like, please sign up, please, I want your money. No, you got to get real specific about this and let people know <clears throat> that in order for your business to grow, you need to attend events, you can get the proper education that you need. And you give them the date and you have them put it in their date book and you have them tell their mom, their cat, their kids, their wife, whoever, that they're going to be going or wherever. And then everything you're talking about, guys, all the, it's an old MLM saying, all roads lead to blank, wherever the next event is. So let's say it's Orlando. It's just every call. It's all roads lead to Orlando. So excited. Sally's locked in. Johnny's locked in. Mary booked her room. And you're constantly edifying the people that are locked in for the event. We're, we're teaching everybody the culture of events. And we're making sure that we are creating environments and places. So if we're in a network marketing company, we want to kind of set up, where's our team going to stay? Try to keep them all together. Right. Where are we hanging out? Where are we meeting up when we get into town? Uh, what's our text circulation? You know, like maybe you set something up or a Facebook group for everybody that's going to the event so you can communicate with everybody. Hey, we're over here at Mario's Pizza. Hey, we're going to be in section D of the arena or depending on the type of venue that your event is in. 
And you do that for every event. I don't care if it's a hotel meeting or whether it's in an arena, whatever size of the company you're in, that is the expectation. And as a leader, I watch people all the time, they wanna go big, they wanna go large, but they're, they're, there's a question mark about whether they are going to the event. There's, there's no reason, no reason for anybody to not be an event. There's a couple of, uh, if it were your wedding and the event came that weekend and you already booked your wedding, great. You don't have to go to the event. I'll let you have that. But if, if, but if the event was booked last year and you picked your week that weekend for your wedding, sorry, you don't count. If your grandma is having her 90th birthday, I will accept that. There's like very few things I will accept for the event. And it's because I know that the event is where people's minds open to the possibilities. And I'm aggressive about getting people to events, not because of my interests, but because I know their chance of being successful increases dramatically right. by being by being there. Right. Um, and there's all kinds of other tricks, Ryan, but I'm not at liberty to discuss them here. There's a <laughs> lot of little evil tricks. No, so no. next time I see you, maybe I'll, I'll drop that. There's a lot of um, ways, incentives, recognition, fun things that you can do with the team yeah. that will get people into the event. But Anybody who's building a network marketing company, you got to be dead serious yeah. about those events. Yeah. I mean, would you say that like, you know, because I mean, network marketing and really building a, a large organization, it's not easy. And one, I think that's one of the things that we have to stop saying is we have to stop telling people that this, this, what we do is easy, but does getting people, have you, have you noticed that over the years, getting people to events, does that just take a lot of pressure off your shoulders? Does it take a lot of weight up? Cause you know, yeah, it's, it's, your, it's the ultimate leverage. Right. Right. Because when somebody goes to the event, like right now, we just came back from an event for something that we're involved with. Just, right. you know, it's like an affiliate thing. It's fun, light and simple. Everybody's like on fire, not just, uh, they're on fire for their own projects. They're on fire in general. Right. I couldn't possibly do that. I could run my mouth 24 hours a day, right. stand on a soapbox, and I still couldn't have infused that energy into people mm -hmm. that the event can it's the hugging, it's the dancing, it's the jumping around, it's watching people get awards, it's seeing people, um, I mean, for me, I, can I be just super truthful as your audience, like, okay, we're no, being straight no, up? Mm -mm. No, they're not ready for that. <laughs> they're not ready for that. Okay, okay, I'll text Shelby later. Portia, I'll tell you later. Forget okay, right. We're going to do it in a chat. We're going to do it with everybody. In a chat. In a chat. Everybody has to handle it. You, it's called the handle. I will never forget. I will never forget the first bigger event I went to. There's probably 500 people in the room. And I'm watching people cross the stage. And everybody's like, I'm a carpet layer. And I made $8,000 last month. And, you know, back when you could really do testimonials and stuff. And there is this one woman who is a lovely, lovely, lovely person. Um, and we're friends to this day. But let's put it this way. She wasn't exactly the sharpest knife in the drawer. And she knows, I said, she's like, really like, da, 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 da. that was her personality. She was just that girl. And she walked across the stage. She went, hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm a stay-at-home mom. And I made $50,000 last month. And I was like, what? That woman? See, because other people, I'd be like, no, they're smarter than me, or they're cuter than me, or they're this with me, or that with me. But this one chick, seeing that story, and every time she franked up, she kept moving up, she kept like 25 grand a month. It made me insane. Like I had to, I was like, I was going to crack this code. I was going to figure it out. And it was because of that lady. And I'm so thankful <laughs> to her. Um, and I'm so thankful to that environment where I was watching the progression of everyday people that were making extraordinary money. And I would just be like, whoa. And, and so th the event is what does that because there's so many stories. Right. Everybody finds someone that they relate to. Everybody sees someone that makes them go, I'm like them. I could right. do that. So, so at that event, you know, cause I, I, what I'm, my, my goal here is to kind of break this down. So someone has that like aha moment and really gets it and, and understands how important events can really be. But so obviously, you know, she ran across stage. She said, Hey, I'm so-and-so I'm this. And other people probably ran across stage too. And they just, it probably just went in. Did it, did it go one in one in ear? Uh, in one ear and out the other because it just doesn't resonate with you. So they were just different people. She was a stay at home mom. She was, you know, from an area that I was familiar with. She was, um, you know, I didn't perceive myself to be slick in any way. You know, a lot of people would be up there and they'd be like, hi, my name is so-and-so and I'm super slick. And I did, you know, I just didn't like, I didn't see myself in them. Her, 
I was like, I, she just clicked with me. Yeah. And that's yeah. the power of testimonials and stories. Right. I can tell my story all day, but only certain people are going to resonate with me. Right. But when you have a, a slew of stories at an event and a slew of people that people can connect with, they start to resonate. Like, you know, look at, um, well, you guys work with Nadia, right? You guys work with John and Nadia? Mm -hmm. You do, right? Yeah. So I, there's a, a, that particular couple. They're a larger than life personality couple, right? And I'm like sitting here. I did put on makeup for you guys today. I was getting my hair fixed. <laughs> didn't get there okay i do have makeup on. <laughs> so i do i do have some makeup and I, I could go like this and like i could go hello you know but the truth is i did not put on a lot of makeup and i did not um get my extra eyelashes on and all that other stuff and it's just not my personality right so when i see somebody who is has that personality and they're just really gorgeous and all this stuff i just look at them and i'm like they are so awesome, but that's just not me. Right. Now, another person who's really into glamour and makeup or whatever, they look at them and they go, I want to be like that because I want to have more money for red, you know, red sole shoes. I, I want to have a Gucci bag. I want to have a this and that. Um, so it really, now my hair's down. I'm all messy. Um, so everybody resonates with different personalities. And the thing that's interesting is it's not always the thing. Like a lot of times you'll think, oh, so-and-so is going to relate to so-and-so, and it's not. Right. Because sometimes we're relating to the person that we think the future us. So you look at somebody and you see, we you guys are afraid. Uh -oh. Losing you a little bit. Oh, you guys are there? Yeah, we can still hear you. Okay, it just. Yeah. No. Internet. We gotta get them some new internet or something. We got this is an internet. We internet lifestyle, and we just been struggling with Wi-Fi. You know how I feel? You just, uh, you're just like, oh, internet. Um. Is it, it hurts. Who knows? The internet's just crazy in America right now. You know, I'm going to start a Netflix series, um, Internet in America. Um, but you mentioned stories. So, like, uh, one question that, I, that I'd love to ask, and this could, I think this could really help a lot of people, is uh, maybe two-part question. So, one, do you find that a lot of people um, are trying to tell their story to everybody and trying to get their story to resonate with everybody? And um, would you have some ways, because – um, make sure she can hear me. Yeah. Um, you may hear me. No, we seem to be better now. I think we're back. We're good now. So, what are some what are some ways that you would that you would give some advice in terms of someone that's looking to craft their story in a better way? And I hope I didn't lose you. Um, nope. Should be good. Let me see if somebody may have just pop on and put her in a different place. So, let's see. Um, you still there with us, Diane? Everyone's like in like on anticipation. Like, did we lose her? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I think we lose her. Did we lost her? Um, let's see. Oh, she's muted. Okay, cool. So yeah, Brian, when you, when we come back, make sure you tell them that she just dropped the biggest bomb. On the yeah. Face. I just right. So you didn't get that. Oh yeah. my god! That bomb. That oh my god. So that's it. That's it, guys. Hey, interviews. Over. I don't know if we can top that bomb. So, um, <laughs> so, you, so you got it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you are so mean. <laughs> so, um, in, for crafting someone's story. So everyone on here is to call it cool. Like I need to craft my story. I need to learn yep. to tell better stories over the years. Have you like learned to like, you know, kind of, craft and sell your story better or would you would you give some advice in terms of like how to how to do that because you see i mean the the top marketers on the planet they always seem to kind of like slip their story into every little thing they do right yes um you know it all started <laughs> on that lineup at the opportunity meetings and stuff that we used to do and we were taught a formula on how to share our testimonial from stage and then what starts to happen is you say it over and over and over, and it starts to get like, like in the beginning, it's like, hi, my name is Diane, 
before I started hanging out with Ryan Cody McMorris, I was feeling very lonely and sad. The first thing I noticed when I hung out with Ryan is he made me smile and I had a good time. Mm -hmm. Since then, we've gone on to become good friends. And the best part is I'm getting to see the, his future bride's wedding dress before him. You know, and that would be, the thing, you know, when you'd say it like a, you'd say it like this, you know, kind of like you were like a robot, like, right. oh, my name is John, I am, you know, and the first couple of times it'd be like kind of crummy, and then you kind of loosen up, and then the next thing you know, you were just kind of like, like, you know, weaving and bobbing, you know, and, 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 and throwing it in, and then you'd embellish it a little bit, and you start to figure out that if you said it this way, the crowd would respond, or if you said it this way, nobody cared, right. and you had mentors in the room that were kind of going, hey, do it this way, or hey, just add this. And then you also listen to other people. So it's really by osmosis. Mm. And um, today on the net, unfortunately, most people aren't plugged in enough to hear stories often enough, so they don't get the experience. I don't want to sound like the old lady, you know, but, but we were trained up because everything was about the stories. Right. Network marketing, guys, is not about your products, okay? It's about people seeing potential for themselves through the stories and then going, hey, these products are the solution, okay? Nobody is going, this diet pill, this dishwasher detergent, this, this, or this, or whatever, is going to change my life. Are we locked again? We get it, though. We can hear you. We, yeah. can, we can still hear you. <clears throat> we can still hear you. Not anymore. No. We're getting, okay. Are we we're back? Getting, there you go. Back. This is so crummy. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know if it's me or you guys. No, it's just Internet Friday yeah, stuff, know. you know. Um, <laughs> so nobody's going, this product, I know, I know. The whole, well, it's because we have so many people watching us, and this stuff is so damn good that we're just it is. Talking. It is, it is. It's like, they don't want to, so, they don't want to, <laughs> they don't want to. I still don't think you can hear me, and I don't know. I'm getting paranoid now. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So, so, you know, nobody says this product line is going to save my life. What they, what they do is they go through the stories and they go, this is possible for those people. Maybe it's possible for me. Right. I think I'll get the products. You know what I'm saying? They're like, that's how the transfer happens. Right. I think I'll align with this company, but it's not because of the company because everybody can buy a diet pill at GNC, right? Everybody can buy dishwashing detergent down at Walmart. It's not the products, guys. Now, but and I know somebody's going. My products are the best products, you know, um, and I'm sure they are, and I'm sure they're fantastic. But that's not what compels people to join. Me. Right. It never has been. Never is going to. So, so I know a lot of us from different mentors have learned your product is people. Your product is people, and I feel like you have been like when you heard. I don't know when you heard it. I don't know when it clicked for you. I don't know when it resonated, but like. I know for a fact now that you've mastered that. Like, cause when you, I think if I'm right, you probably heard it and then you're like, you know what? That resonates with me. And over the years you have mastered people because you realize that, you know what? My product is people. And one thing I love about you is you keep everything so basic at the human level and you've mastered that. So, you know, kind of go into that, that, that process of like, you know, when you were really starting to understand, because your retention rate is amazing. I kind of wanted to bring up retention, but the, the, the fact that you understand people so well, would you attest that to how good your retention is in everything that you do? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because understanding that a lot of people join for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, one guy, hardcore, wants to make money. He wants to make money now. He wants to make money fast. Another person wants to show up at the meeting every month or show up on the webinar every month to get praised because she's lost some weight. Another person wants to show up and they want to get hugs. Another person, um, you know, wants to earn the vacation um, or whatever the, the premium, you know, the company's giving out, you know, whatever the promotion is. Another person just wants to feel good. So you have to create environments that everybody feels good in. And a lot of leaders, they create environments that, you know, they're either, you know, I'm going to push on you. We all have to be hard chargers we all shit, or environments that don't um, work for the hard charger. So you got to find that spectrum of how to keep everybody in, in the state that makes them perform best right. and accept that 80% of people are just, you know, they're going to be customers, glorified customers, maybe, or maybe they're just going to have one or two people on the product. And that's cool. That's a lot of volume. When you right. when you add that up, yeah, yeah. Um, they used to call it Jerry Clark used to call it dud volume. You can get rich off dud volume. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, and that's kind of you know us diminishing. We because stallions are kind of like okay, the donkeys or the whatever they are back there or whatever. But but the truth is that's the nature of of this industry right. um, is that we want lots of people eating you know i always say swallow that product smear it all over your face smear it all over your body whatever it is um because consumption um is the magic you know the monthly consumption and when you have a family that the whole family is consuming the product that's good business you know um studs they come and they go. They tend to be the type of guys that are always looking to move. They tend to be, and I said guys because it tends to be guys. Um, you know, it's, sorry, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, you know. Um, you wouldn't have judged you know, that type of person. <laughs> you know what? The women are the heart and soul of this industry, and don't you ever forget it. You're never, never going to change, really you know. Um, I just used to work with guys because I'm kind of like, I'm, a, I'm an aggressive type of person. I'm not aggressive. What is it? I'm a strong personality. And it was almost, almost always dudes. Back in the beginning, it was, it was all men. It was all men. And then over the years, um, I, I, I work with a lot of women now. And it's, um, it's just been an interesting transition, mostly because I'm, I'm like an overachiever. Like, you know, I'm like, let's run, let's run, let's run. Um, so I tend to be a little, uh, I don't know what at times um you know i like to i like to i don't know i like to get it done right so, i like so, to get it done so. so um so for someone like yourself because i mean i mean we know you we know you pretty well and we know you know how you, how you do things and that you just i mean focus right for someone like yourself that is that focused and is that you know boom hardcore but how do you create that environment i mean how how do you kind of make sure that you stay grounded to create an environment where um everyone understood that hey you know we don't have to be dying because you know i feel like sometimes you can be so inspirational that everyone wants to be like you but how how do you keep that environment in a way that like you know that everyone knew their role and it was okay um Remember the old TV show, uh, Cheers? I don't I know do. if you remember it. Um, she almost said Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Well, you're, 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 you're young whippersnappers, but anybody a little bit more short. I, I know, what TV it show. Is, <laughs> you know what it is. You maybe never watch it, but the, the song, the theme song, the whole point of Cheers and the theme song to Cheers was where everybody knows your name. The song was just like, the idea is the reason why you stopped in Cheers after work is because you walked in and there was this one guy named Norm and everybody, he'd walk in the door and everybody go, Norm! And that's what most people want. They want that place where everybody knows your name. Right. And I've just always focused on knowing everybody's name. You know, we just came back from an event with five, 600 people. Everybody's like, how do you know everybody? Right. It's because I care. And I don't need or want or desire. I think it's like a rainbow. It's a spectrum. And everybody has their place. And everybody, you know, if somebody says to me, Di, I want to run. I want to run like the wind. Push me. Coach me. I will. But if somebody just wants to hang out, I'm just going to hug them. Right. And a lot of people don't understand that. It's just like, what, what, what do you want? And then the other thing is, a lot of people say they want something that's really not what they want. So right. you have to understand the right. difference. So, so you know, I want to I wanna be double diamond Starfleet commander, right. double twinkle director. Yeah. But their activity shows you that they really just get excited if they win a t-shirt. Right. So, so do you, so do you work for, so when you, so when you hear that, because I mean, I know if you're, if you're out there recruiting, cause we hear it all the time, right. You know, you know, someone comes in and you know, they say, Hey, yeah, I want to be, you know, star <laughs> you know, uh, caramel coffee with springs on top. I can't I say it. Right. You know, I can't. Double I diamond with a twist sprinkle, or what does Bert call it? Bert has a funny name for it. It's like you Bert Francis double something. <laughs> Star Trek Whatever the top rank is. Dark Vader, yeah, yeah, yeah. lightsaber uh, yes. on top. Um, yes. You know, but the per so how do you how do you kind of develop when you were just like hearing it and you're like, no, I know that person. You know, wants to. You know, I know. You just watch action. Yeah. Watch their action. Okay. Um, and don't make any activity level wrong. Right. Um, which is hard sometimes. I mean, I'll admit that sometimes when somebody's going da 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 and they're not doing anything, I, I can get frustrated. Um, right. I can get frustrated. But generally speaking, 
you watch what the person does, not what the person says. By the way, with leaders too. Leaders will tell you, I remember growing up where I grew up, they'd be like, it's fun, simple, magical. We just wear a button and talk to people. No, they have these huge marketing campaigns running and full page ads and booklet mailings and all this other stuff. But they didn't tell you that until you got close enough and they could tell that you were a charger because they didn't want to blow you out of the water. So everybody else would say, wear a button and talk to people. And I knew there had to be more and there was more. A lot of people, they wore a button and talked to people and they made an extra 500 bucks a month and that was awesome for them. Right. So the ones that want to know will will be constantly like, tell me more, I'm ready for more, I'm ready for more, I'm ready for more, and they can, you can tell by their actions. Everybody goes to the event and says, I want to be Starfleet Commander. Right. I mean, everybody does, because it's, it's just like everybody wanted to be a fireman or a rock star or a cowboy or whatever when they grew up. But mm-hmm. not that many people got on a horse or went to, you know, fire school or whatever or, or you know paid the pound you know paid the pavement trying to sing Urban classic so <laughs> no that's um that's awesome um there was um we actually we um we we're we're headed to the museum but there's one question there's one last question that i wanted to ask um and i feel like it could really help a lot of people so there was a few people at the event that we were just at um talking about hey you know they're going through personal things life comes up and you know this is something that um, actually one of my first coaches that didn't give me what I wanted when I paid him a lot of money, but actually if there was one lesson that I taught. You should feel free to pay me a lot of money. I'll I give do. you whatever I you do. want. I do. But the <laughs> PayPal, there's something wrong with it. I don't know what's up with it. Technology. I know. And they have a cap on the limit. So. Right. <laughs> I'm um, kidding. But, um, you know, I remember him telling me something about like, he was just like, dude, if you're a full timer, you know, if you want to be a full timer, and you can't accept that life happens, chances are you won't be a full timer because like, it's like the universe keeping you safe. Yeah. And I, I, there was a few people that we heard, you know, talking about, Hey, I've, I've been going through a lot of personal stuff too, that were, you know, seven figure, eight figure, multiple, you know, quadruple figure earners. Right. You know, we put a lot of commas in our check. I know you mentioned some stuff too. How, how over the years, how have you kind of um, worked through life? as it happens and and how do you explain like when people come up to you and they 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 said they want to be full-time and then they say oh you know what but i haven't done this because you know my dog you know lost a foot and you know you know so how have you kind of worked through the personal things because obviously no matter how much money you make guess what it doesn't stop life happening right no it doesn't and so there's an old mlm saying i think it might have been made up by larry thompson but i'm not sure um <clears throat> it's it's all distractions are equal okay if it's raining out or your grandmother died it's pretty much equal if it's keeping you from your business okay you you know there's a forest fire in your backyard which is absolutely horrific or your kid has chicken pox in the realm of business it's equal now I know that sounds harsh but it's true when we have a job we go to work every day and we work for our master right and there's a couple conditions that we're allowed to not go to work you know we're sick we have a death in the family etc well when we have a business that's our work so if we allow anything but those things that would keep us from going to a job to keep us from our our business then we're fooling ourselves because all distractions are equal and my mentor said over and over and over he goes the reason why most people cannot be successful it's because most people can't make their own work. They're waiting for someone to tell them what to do because they were trained as an employee. We're going to give you a, I mean, people want a job description and they want to know exactly what I'm supposed to do every day. When you come into this industry, yes, you're given guidelines and instruction and so on, but then you have to make your own work on a daily basis. You have to create your activity. And that's what stops people. And then it's really easy to make the excuse of my dog's foot or my, you know, whatever, the, the, the rice overboiled. We're going to the museum. We're stopping this multi-million dollar interview because we're going to the museum. I'm kidding. <laughs> going to the museum. What kind of museum are you going to? That's one of these cool. kids, damn it. <laughs> I know. It's summertime. They should be entertained and loved by their parents. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's the but, big um, but, I mean, honestly, though, there's probably, I mean, we're able to take our kid. We're able to honestly have an amazing Integrate. interview and um, 
you know, then take our kids to the museum. But there's, there's probably so many things that happened in our life that we, that if we would have made a different choice today wouldn't have happened, you know? And exactly. I, know, I know that you have the same stuff going on in your life and look around. And at the end of the day, I think it was either you or Norbert that said this, but the show goes on. It sure does. I mean, I was very sick this weekend. Um, I was sick for quite a while before the event and I actually stopped working for three days. I told everybody I can't talk to you anymore because I have to be well for the show because I knew we were going and I knew I was a, you know, a keynote speaker right. and I knew I had responsibilities and everybody was like looking for me and I was like, oh, breaking up again. No. I told everyone, I can't do this because I have to be well. The show has to go on and you make choices. Um, when you start your business, you have to go on a 90 day run, like work like gangbusters to gain momentum. Right. And then you do another 90 days to sustain and advance your momentum. And there is nothing else. Now, once you get to our level, you just kind of sustain it. We're on auto, you know, we're like on cruise control, right? We just kind of just make sure that everything's running right. And we don't have to work like crazy because we've created momentum. And then once you have momentum, the car keeps rolling, right? Like everything, the rocket ship keeps flying. The plane keeps flying. You have to get off the ground. You have to get into motion. And that's the area where people, they want what we have from the beginning, but they didn't look at what we did to get to here, to summer vacation with their kids and you guys getting to be together and getting to travel the way we do, et cetera. Um, you know, everybody says you're always traveling. How do you ever get any work done? It's called the phone. It's amazing. <laughs> it's like, you know, making money, making money, making money, take a picture, you know, making money, take a video. Um, we couldn't do this back in the day when I started, you know. Um, so we'll close out with this. There's never been a time like now for, for people to make a fortune from wherever they want. There's never been an age. We're in communication age. And there's never been a time for the average person. I sat in a seminar, an internet marketing seminar. It was an $800 a month internet marketing, internet marketing club. 800 bucks a month we paid to go to this thing, right? And I never paid for it. <laughs> I just snuck in with other people because they were allowed to bring a guest. So I'd always like suck up that when I knew the event was coming, I would suck up to someone so they'd invite me. True story. Um, true story. Yeah, I have friends. Would you suck up, you know, I often have like an extra ticket or something or whatever. So people don't realize, suck up. So, and I remember sitting there and a very, very prominent internet marketer said, your competitor is not the company in the Silicon Valley that's creating all the media. Your competitor is a housewife in Kenosha, Wisconsin with a laptop. Mm. And I sat there and I laughed because I had no idea all the technology that I was learning. I didn't really understand. But what I knew is that I was everybody's competition. I was the housewife and maybe not in Kenosha, Wisconsin, but I was the housewife. And then they gave me a smartphone and then the story, the rest was over. Right. So anybody, anywhere, I mean, look at what we're doing right now. We're on this technology that allows us to broadcast live. And if we go out and gather an audience, I mean, my friend Courtney Looper has 1.9 million followers on her profile. And she makes videos about household cleaners and recipes. 1.9 million followers on her profile, not a fan page. So you can't advertise to build that up. Right. That, right, that, I, we think we're like big, you know, big poop when we have 10,000. I got 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, hi, I'm from Texas. I got, to, you know, 1.9 million followers. And everybody's like, you know, it's just like, it's, so when people tell me you can't do this, or you have to do that. I love when the internet people, well, you have to use your this, or you have to do that. I'm like, actually, no, you don't. <laughs> what you need to do is care about people and gather people and talk about things that are interesting and important to people. And then as you have a relationship, all you do is make offers. That's all it is. Right. So we're sitting here broadcasting, uh, even though it took us a little while to get here and we break it up a little bit. We're sitting here broadcasting and people are hearing our voices. Every single one of you that's watching has the opportunity to broadcast today. Maybe you'll only be heard by one, two or three people. But if you work at this for 90 days and you really go to work, you can be heard by hundreds and thousands of people every single week. Do you think it would be hard to recruit a few people if you had, you know, if you had 100 presentations a week because you just pointed at it you you broadcast and you got to know people this and that and then you come look at what i'm working on and you got 100 presentations in a week do you think you could recruit 10 
Oh, yeah. What if it was only 100 a month? Do you think you could recruit 10? And if you recruited 10 people a month, you would be further along than everybody in this industry. And if you learn how to teach them and you learn how to work in depth and you learn how to work through their networks, and some skills that you can really hone over time through mentorship, you can create an empire from, from, from your phone, from your laptop, from anywhere. Yep. No, that's, that's heavy. Um, Diane, I mean, we love you. We absolutely adore you. You're amazing. Um, we have just, we, we definitely enjoy, we cannot give you enough gratitude for the relationship that, um, that we've created and the things that you've poured into us at VIP parties and dinners and mastermind. Yeah. I mean, just everything um, that you've done for us is, um, you know, we're just so grateful for you and, um, you know, we love everything you do and we can't wait to see you again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, hey, Ryan, let me, let me say one last thing. Guys, not too long ago, I hadn't hung out with these guys much because our paths just hadn't crossed. If you stay in the game and you keep showing up, the cream of the crop, it's, you know, people think, oh, they all hang out together, all the years and all the this and all. It's not like that. It's what happens is we stuck. We hung around and sooner or later we end up in the same place right. at the same time and you can and will too so that's why we've been hanging out together because it's just our paths came together at this time in this place mostly because i think the universe knew that i wanted to watch all the details of the wedding maybe it's in weddings but that's how it works you end up in the in the party you end up in the suite you end up in the mastermind you keep investing in yourself and you keep showing up and the next thing you know it's not about how do I get to hang out with those people? It's about how can I not hang out with those people? Because right. you become friends. Right. And then friends, of course, want to help each other and do business together. And that's how people end up because they're all like, oh, they all, they all hang out together and they all give each other, you know, preference and a leg up. And no, it's because you have fun and you want to, you know, like if I were doing a launch, I'd call Ryan. Hey, Ryan, do you want to look at this? It's not a big pitch. It's not weird. It's not like... It's not like, you know, if I'm doing something, if he's doing something, I would hope he would, you know, send me a message. Well, hey, just so you know, this is coming up. Yeah. I may or may not fit into my schedule. It may or may not be something I'm doing, but it wouldn't be that way. See, because all of that stuff goes away. It stops being weird. Yeah, and yeah. it just becomes people helping one another. And get this, it's called networking. Right. right. <laughs> networking. You know, like Stephen, we're, we're at dinner with, uh, with oh. Steve and Rachel. And you know, we're just kind of, you know, talking. And he goes, dude, send me your link to that yeah. and i was just like okay and then like he hit me up he's like dude i want like send me the link to that you know what i mean so it's like it, it, it was no pitch you know what i mean no you weren't trying to sell anything you know something of course he wants to buy from somebody that's a colleague or a friend right. and he didn't want to give the money to the company he wants to give the money to somebody great right. and so that's that's how it works so yeah we all make a lot of money selling stuff and so on and so forth but it's just because of relationships. It yeah. builds up over time. You just got to stay in the game. Or as uh, <clears throat> as one of the teachers that I had for many moons said, hang around the flagpole. You just got to hang around the flagpole. <laughs> exactly. That's it. Exactly. Um, All right. I interrupted your clothes. I'm no, sorry. no, you're good. Just, you're good. You're good. No, you're I was going to interrupt anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm used to, trust, okay. me, trust me. Like, if you don't get, I'm used to. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, good. I like it. I like a strong man. I just want to say real quick, thank you for everything. Like every time we get together and every time we talk, I fall more in love with you. Like <laughs> you're just so amazing. And I just like brag to everyone in the world about how amazing you are. And I love you so much. Aww. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, just, I know. Like, it's so beautiful. Amazing. I love you, man. <laughs> Um, if you guys, if you, if you are connected with Diane, um, here's what I want you to do. I want you to send her a thank you message. I want you to send her a thank you, like voice message, send her a thank flowers, you. Flowers, dark chocolate, flowers, checks, diamonds, flowers, <laughs> PayPal invoices, whatever you want. Like you can send her. <laughs> <laughs> I or 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 a night or a note saying, "Hey, what's up?" I was I saw you. <laughs> I'm alive. That kept going in and out and was delayed. And <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we appreciate your time. Um, we hope you have an amazing weekend. Again, guys, make sure you reach out to Diane today. Get on her email list too, because her emails are awesome. Uh, her emails are great. So if you want, if you're out there and you want to learn how to be a better email marketer, or if you just want to learn how to connect with people a little better, um, not only get on her email list because she provides a lot of value, but get on that list because you can learn a ton just from reading 
her emails. Okay. Like she doesn't just like <laughs> preach something and then go do the opposite. Right. Like she actually practices what she well, preaches. Even the other day you asked, we asked you how often you emailed and you were like, I email when I have something to say. Boom. So she's not emailing just bullshit. Right. She's emailing <laughs> like really good stuff. Right. Good. So you know, if you ain't getting that's what it says in my welcome letter. It's like, you might hear from me seven times this week. You might hear from me once. I don't know. It just depends on what's going on. Right. Now, sometimes <laughs> I even hit them up like three times in a day when I'm getting, you know, you know, she's having a day. You know a lot of stuff's going on in Diane's life. She hits you up three times. <laughs> Like she got something to say. <laughs> I, I've been I, I I've been known to do it. You never know. So oh, that's awesome. Um, but you know we appreciate you. Um, we'll see you in. Where are you speaking next? I was curious. Where are you speaking next? Um, I'm I, actually I'm in a private event in a couple of weeks. I'll be with a lot of uh, top leaders, Ray and Ray Higdon and um and and Tom Falcone and Lisa Grossman. But unfortunately, it's a it's a team event. Somebody wants to know about it. Um, you know, it's in New Orleans. Um, and then, um, I don't have no speaking gigs coming up. Somebody has got to like put me up on the stage. We'll see you guys at Top Earner Academy. Um, and I will be enjoying that from the seats, which will be perfect for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see that awesome. the calls come in. You never know what's, uh, you know, what's coming down the pike, but that's it for now. I love it. I love it. So we will see you at Top Earner. Safe travels to New Orleans this weekend, my friend. And uh, thank you. Well, thanks. Love you. <laughs> Enjoy the museum. Have fun with the kids. <laughs> I'll you send you Look, everybody's saying hi. Vanita and Maria. Uh, Maria came in before, and Vanita just said hi. So people are saying hi. <laughs> hey, um, yeah, and guys, if you want the replay, um, just hit us up, and we'll give you the replay. So if you want it, we recorded it. So. Um, all there for you. Just hit us up and we'll, uh, we'll get it for you, okay? So have a wonderful See day, guys. Later. Appreciate you guys being on Bye. here. See ya. Bye. Take care, everyone.